I want to uh, take a look at the double angle formulas, uh, show how we can find out information about angles from knowing information about other angles, and um, how we might um, use a double angle formula in a, in a proof, verifying uh, another identity. So here we go. Uh, I want to start with an angle A. Um, I want to know, I'm telling you that the sine of A is uh, 3 fourths and that A is a first quadrant angle and I want you to find the sine of 2a, the cosine of 2a, and the tangent of 2a. So first thing I'm going to do is just draw a picture here because that gets me a lot of information about a. Uh, the sine of a is um, 3 divided by 4. Um, I'm going to redraw that a little bit because it's probably something a little more like this. 3 and 4 um, I can use Pythagoras to get the other side here, the square root of 16 minus 9, which would be the square root of 7. So now that I have all three sides, i got any trig function of a that I want. The thing is, I want to find out information about the sine of 2a and cosine of 2a and so on. Um, using my ha double angle formulas, um, the sine of 2a is 2 times the sine of a times the cosine of a. And I know the sine of a and the cosine of a because I've got that triangle. So this is 2 times 3 fourths. The sine of a was given to me, right? But the cosine of a I have to calculate as the square root of 7 over 4. So the grand total here, the sine of 2a, is, um, let's see, the 2 and 4 cancel out. So I've got 3 radical 7 over 8. Okay. Okay, that's the sine. How about the cosine? Cosine of 2a is... Cosine, I've got several versions of the double angle formula for cosine. The one that I can remember is the first one. Uh, cosine squared a minus sine squared a. This one's enough like the, the cosine of a plus a that I, that I can remember it pretty quickly. Um, but I've got enough information here. I've got the cosine of a, I've got the sine of a, so here we go. Cosine of a is radical 7 over 4. I need that squared. The sine of a is 3 over 4. I need that squared, and I need to subtract the 2 here. So I've got 7 over 16 minus 9 over 16 over 16. And this gives me negative 2 over 16, which is uh, negative 1 over 8. Interesting. Interesting in a couple ways. One is that um, it's negative. Does it seem right that it's negative? Well, if this angle here um, square root of 7 is less than 3. 3 would be the square root of 9. So looking at this side is bigger than that side. So this angle here is bigger than 45 degrees. When I double it, it's going to be bigger than 90 degrees. So this cosine of 2a, I'm taking the cosine of an angle in the second quadrant. That would be a negative x value over r. So yeah, this should be negative. Okay. Uh, the sine still turned out to be positive because uh, in the second quadrant, the y coordinate divided by r is positive. So we're good there. Next is the tangent of 2a. Now i got two ways that I could do the tangent of 2a. One is, I already know the sine and cosine, so heck, I can just write 3 radical 7 over 8 divided by negative 1 over 8 for a grand total of, the 8's cancel out, and I get negative 3 radical 7. Okay. One of the reasons why I, I rarely use the tangent um, identities is because I use sine and cosine all the time, and if I know sine and cosine, then I can just divide to get tangent. If I wanted to use that identity, just to show how it works here, um, the tangent of 2a is 2 tan a over 1 minus tangent squared a. And so, okay, I know the tangent of a. Let's try it. Tangent of a, oops, where's my picture? It just barely disappeared. Tangent of a is 3 over the square root of 7. So I got 2 times 3 over the square root of 7. And then I'm going to divide by 1 minus tangent squared. So 1 minus 3 over the square root of 7 squared. 
And how does this come out? Um, I've got 6 over radical 7 on the top. I've got 1 minus 9 over 7 on the bottom. Huh. Well, is this going to come out to be negative 1 over 8? Doesn't look like it initially here. Uh, I don't know. I'm going to keep going, I guess. Uh, so, what am I going to do? I want to multiply top and bottom by 7. So, I'm going to multiply by 7 over 7. That's just multiplying by 1. I don't change the value. I just change what it looks like. Um, so, the thing is here, the radical 7 and the 7 cancel out. I've got 6 times radical 7. On the bottom, I've got 7 minus 9. And I get, what, 6 radical 7 over negative 2, which is negative 3 radical 7. Is that what I got before? Oh yeah, negative 3 radical 7. Okay, good. I should get the same answer both ways. I paused there for a little while because I was thinking I'm not going to get the same answer. Somehow I was trying to come up with this answer, but it's like, wait, that's the cosine. This is the answer that I need to come up with. So, good. Tangent both ways. Um, one more uh, thing I want to do here is I want to just take a look at um, a verify an identity here. So let's say verify. Here's something I'm claiming is an identity and I want to see if I can show that it's true. The sine of 2 theta divided by the sine of theta minus the cosine of 2 theta divided by the cosine of theta is equal to the secant of theta. Trig functions are amazing how they just are so relationships so many different ways here. Um, well, verify. I'm claiming this is true. I don't know that it's true. i got to prove it's true. Well, generally in verifying identities it's easier for me to take big things and simplify them rather than to take simple things and complicate them. So, let me see what I can do here. Uh, this is just a theta. This has got thetas and two thetas. Let's use our double angle formulas to get rid of those thetas. So I've got the sine of two theta is two sine theta cosine theta. I've got that over sine theta. Ooh, all of a sudden I like that. And then I've got minus the cosine of two theta. You know, I'm going to go for my standby vanilla flavor here of cos squared theta minus sine squared theta because I just feel uncomfortable even after all these years. Like, it's like, is it 2 minus? Oh, I'm anyway, uh, I got a cosine theta on the bottom. Okay. Well, one thing I noticed right away is that over here, uh, the sine theta is cancel out. I've got, in this fraction, I've got a sine theta on the top and a sine theta on the bottom. So that's going to be nice. Um, so this just turns into a 2 cosine theta. Got to be a little careful here. Some people might want to cancel out the cosines, but I can't do that because there's a minus sign in here. It's not, the top's not factored. Um, however, um, I'm thinking maybe if I break this up into a couple of fractions. Um, write it like this. Oops, no, no, it's a minus sign. So I'm going to have minus cosine squared theta over cosine theta and then the minus minus is going to be plus sine squared theta over cosine theta. So here um, here cosine cancels out. I don't, I don't know where this is going. I'm just uh, feeling it through. It's quite often the case when you're verifying identities that you you don't know where you're going. You're just trying to go. Um, so one of those cancels out, and this one right here, um, I think I want to switch to 1 minus cosine squared theta on the top, because then I'm going to be able to work with that cosine theta on the bottom. So anyway, let's see what we have now. I've got um, a 2 cosine theta minus cosine theta, and that's just cosine theta. 
Splitting this up, this is a 1 over cosine theta minus cosine squared theta over cosine theta. Ah, all of a sudden things are looking better. Now the cosine on the bottom cancels with one of those on the top. I've got cosine theta. 1 over cosine theta is secant theta. With one of these canceling, uh, I'm going to be a little careful here. Um, this is sometimes just the way we write things. Um, cosine squared theta could look like cosine 2 theta. Uh, this is the squared, right? And so one of the cosines cancels out with the cosine on the bottom, and I'm just left with a cosine on the top. Now I've got a cosine theta here and a minus cosine theta there. They go away, and I'm left with secant theta, which I think, I think, yes, is what I wanted it to be. Okay. You will find quite often that as you're doing these verifying identities, um, you don't see the end when you get started, but that doesn't matter. I can see that this was thetas and two thetas on this side. This was just thetas on that side. So I needed to turn the two thetas into thetas using the double angle formulas. And then you just keep going. Do legal algebra, use trig identities, keep trying to simplify. Keep an eye on where you're trying to get to, and uh, eventually you will. That might not have been the, the shortest route to take. It probably wasn't. Probably I'd have been better off right away using the chocolate flavor of the double angle formula for cosine. But I don't remember that one. I have to, I have to figure it out every time. So I use what I do remember, and I can still get there. Okay? Good.